Michigan State. Old Sparty had had his guts ripped out in a couple of games against Michigan and Ohio State. Alvarez, Letterman's jacket, trying to go 10-0. Fashion statement, fashion this. Oh. A block punt. Michigan State in the first quarter making a play in special teams. Spartans recovering in the end zone. 14-7, Michigan State up. Now 14-14 and Erasmus James just destroys his trick play, but somehow Aaron Alexander back to Jason Kidd who got up off the ground. The story for Wisconsin's defense. Right when they thought they had a play made, all of a sudden it's a touchdown for Michigan State. Look at it here again. Erasmus James, it's over, right? Right. Look at Teague on the ground. Has the presence of mind jump back up, slip outside, catch the pass down the sideline, and Michigan State back with the momentum reach. And you know what? That's how razor thin it is between staying undefeated and losing or like this into the first half fourth and goal Anthony oh. Davis appears to cross the plane officials say no they've got the replay rule in the Big Ten they had a look what do you think Mayday I think it's awful close I would call that a touchdown looks like the ball's in his left hand across the plane you, you just can can't tell. see the ball in the goal line that's the problem well you can tell from Barry's reaction they did not call it a touchdown and here's the red shirt freshman family came from Liberia great story J.U. Colquick 30 yards the big fullback kid score later on a two-yard run and then Drew Stanton hurt that shoulder against Michigan unexpectedly into the game. Upstairs to Matt Trannon, and all of a sudden, it's a Sparty-sized can of whooping being applied to the Badgers' backside, and DeAndre Cobb with the exclamation point. I normally don't talk about the offensive line because Mayday does, but a great job by the Michigan State offensive line of keeping their defenders engaged. They couldn't get off the block, an easy cut black, and an easy run there for T. These coaching seminars, it's rubbing off on you, isn't it? Look at the run yards guys 430 for the Spartans in the 49 14 win this was against the sixth ranked rushing defense in the country coming in Wisconsin unable to handle the pressure they fall from the ranks of the unbeaten in devastating fashion Auburn welcoming Georgia to the Plains Tommy Tuberville's team they already have a berth in the SEC championship game this many believe Auburn's biggest test Saw a big guy carrying a flag out there. Auburn waving the flag on offense early. Jason Campbell to Ronnie Brown. This first drive, this is when Auburn makes his hay. It really does. And Ronnie Brown, guys, I thought had a terrific first drive. Look at him spot shadowed here. Again, getting both guys in the backfield. Look at Ronnie Brown keep with his block. That's Greg Blue, a terrific safety. Just drives him into the ground. And Cadillac with a nice game. And then out Borges. Oh, little option look. And Cadillac will turn the corner and go in. Eighth time in ten games that Auburn scored on its opening drive. The other two times they fumbled the red zone. They move it when they get it early. David Green had Reggie Brown open under through and Carlos Rogers made him pay 215 attempts for Green without an interception until that pass the ensuing drive Cadillac Williams told Anthony Mix in the huddle let's get ready to celebrate Mix this is going to be a touchdown Cadillac is the amazing Prescott it's 14 nothing Auburn and that defense swarming David Green had three sacks on the day 32 sacks coming in and was swarming again three more sacks 35 sacks but Jason Campbell guys another unbelievable day so efficient at the quarterback position and this big time here here when Green hits Reggie Brown and Junior Rose Green just lets him have a clean hit made it. it's head to head yeah it's a good hit right there he just leveled him on the play that's what you want out of your secondary if somebody comes across the middle let them know that your area but four Fortunately enough, he went down on the play, but walked off the field. Brown taken to the hospitals for x-rays. They say he has a concussion, and no doubt about that. Here, David Green just didn't have a typical David Green type of day. Just under-throwing an open Jeremy Thomas. And then Cadillac amassing yards in all kinds of ways. He gets 42 here on the punt return. What a traffic cop. Look at him direct traffic right here. Look at him make the cut. He's one of the hardest. He is the hardest back to bring down in America, Trev. I don't get it. Nobody can tackle this guy. It's just the offense. But watch here, Jason Campbell. What a touch on the play to Ronnie Brown. What about Ronnie Brown, guys? Seven catches for 88 yards. The versatility he brings out of that backfield. Al Borges doing a great job of having both guys in the backfield at the same time. So hard to defend. Those two combined for 260 yards. Tommy Tuberville described the performance as awesome and said of Cadillac and Ronnie Brown, you can't defense them. You just can't do it. Stoops with Arizona against USC. I don't know. If I'll see that too. I mean, no, that's all right. it might be an advanced scouting report depending on what happens. Here is Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush in a three nothing game. Arizona had the lead early. I, I know what the scouting report will say. Number number five. He's okay. He's pretty good. <laughs> Look at the return here. 38 yards. Reggie Bush making it happen for USC. Guarantee you. 
Matt Leiner looking up top. David Kiffin and SC is on the board. And then oh, Norm Chow decides we need to get a little blood pumping here. Desmond Reed looking for the freshman Dwayne Jarrett off the end round pass. That would set up Lendale White. Sometimes a forgotten running back for the Trojans. Big guy can get a tough yard for a minute. Get down on the goal line and Lendale White pounds it in every time. USC rolling over Arizona. Trojans came in with more blowout wins than anybody in the country. Matt Leinert said, everybody wants to knock off number one, but I'm telling you, in the Big 12, Texas and Kansas, Cedric Benson leads the nation in scoring. He, you know, he scored more touchdowns than six teams this year. And here goes Benson, 36th game in which he's had a touchdown. That is a 1A record. 16-13 Kansas lead. Ryan Luke in at quarterback. Tiny Lionel Anderson for the touchdown. Anderson pulls it in. Rock, Chalk, Jay, Hawk, Kansas. The man Gino's up 23-13. Pass interference on that play, too. It's just a great catch. Well, there'll be some more talk about pass interference in a bit. Watch Nick Reed here with the arrow. Vincent Young. Uh, you know, he's lucky he didn't have to see an orthopedic surgeon after that move. Young with the rushing TD, cuts it to 23-20. Now here's Luke finding Charles Gordon on a third down play. You see the flag flying in there. Take a look at this guy. Call off his pass interference, Mayday. A little bit of a push-off there. Could go either way, but at this point in the game, it shouldn't be left up to the officiating crew to make a call like this. But the point is it's a judgment call. That's his call to make, and he made the judgment call that it was pass interference. Mark Mangino did not like it one little bit. This is 4th and 18. You can't run on 4th and 18. 4th and 18, you've got to throw the ball down the field and get it past the sticks. And unless you're Vince Young. A breakdown to make a tackle. Vince Young making the play and now Vince, for the game. Work, work, fires for the end zone for Jeffrey. He caught it, he caught it. Touchdown, Texas. Tony Jeffrey's done it. What a pass by Young. What a catch by Jeffrey. The Longhorns have rallied to take the lead. And Young pulls another one out of the fire after the big rally from 35-7 down against Oklahoma State last week. Texas rising up off the mat, 27-23, and the Longhorns saving their hope for a berth in a BCS game. They lose in Lawrence. It's all over. It's Cotton Holiday again for them. It was no holiday, nor was it any picnic for Mark Mangino, who was less than amused by the call made by the Big 12 official against Kansas late in the game. You know what this is all about, don't you? That's right. BCS. That's what made a difference today in the game. That's what made a difference in the call in front of their bench. Dollar signs. I've got a football team to fight for, and I'm not going to be pushed around, or this university pushed around, because we're not the big spenders, we're not the big BCS team in the league. I'm not going to put up with that. You guys have sat here for three years. Have I made an excuse about losing a game here? Any of you? Chuck, you've been sitting in here. How about you, Jason? Rick? Okay. Standing the conference, they are about to ditch. They never won in Morgantown since the inception of Big East football. Special teams doing it for Tom O'Brien's team. DeWan Tribble is just his second career punt return, and he takes it all the way to the end zone. 14 nothing. Done it once. Might as well try it again with Will Blackman. I don't know what happened to Tribble, but he did such a good job. You're ready him. We'll put Will Blackman back there. Great return. We never show the punt unless it's a punt return. Will Blackman just right up the middle avoids a couple tackles there, Mark. Nobody around. 71 yards. Boston College winning special teams, and that made the reason why they won the game. You know, it is exactly the reason why they won the game trail 36 17 the final because west virginia outgained bc 452 to 243 but those two plays on special teams getting it done for o'brien's team and they now are firmly in charge of their destiny in the big east they're at temple and home to syracuse win those games and they're going to a bcs game because syracuse was still mathematically alive they went into temple and walter washington just ran all over them 34 to 24, Washington accounting for over 300 yards. Hey, Walter Washington might be a candidate for a helmet sticker. You bet.
315 yards, four total touchdowns, the conference loss, and having to deal with Miami. Hurricanes hadn't lost three in a row since 1999, and Frank Gore, the running game's been a disappointment for the Canes, but certainly not on this day with Frank Gore. Great job of keeping those legs turning, getting into the end zone, but guys, how about this tight end in Virginia? We talked about great tight ends, a Mackey candidate. Here's Marcus Higgins right here. Look at the one-handed catch right there by Heath Miller. A wonderful job. Gets it tied at seven. And Miami going right back to the ground and right back to Frank Gore. Had a career day, 195 yards, 39 there. That's set up for Brock Berlin, touchdown pass. Here's a Pontiac game-changing nominee. See, Coker, you know, he knows they're not going to kick Devin Hester, so you put Roscoe Paris back there. They'll try him. That's a problem, too, Mayday. Got a lot of help from his friends. Terrific blocks on this punt return, but Roscoe Paris, a big day for him. 62 yards on the punt return, and he's not done. Look at Brock Berlin. Works for Roscoe once. He's going to Roscoe again. Great adjustment to the football. 25-yard touchdown reception for Roscoe Perry. And Miami goes into Virginia and wins it 31-21. to So the Hurricanes hanging in there in the ACC race. Berlin 18-33, Buck 77 to complement the fine day by Gore. Marcus Higgins, who came into the game completing well over 60% of his passes. In fact, nearly 67%, just 10 of 25 and held under 100 yards pass favored by 30 Adrian Peterson shoulder injury just 58 yards so who shouldered the load how about number 18 Jason White remember that 18 six years senior playing in his second senior day for OU threw three incomplete passes on his first eight attempts and then went on a roll and you are experiencing that roll part one ends right there Willie Roberts touchdown but White is not done Playing in part on behalf of his grandfather who died earlier in the week. White is on fire. Jason White is going to complete 18 consecutive passes. Brandon Jones for the touchdown. White, 19 TD passes in his last five games. You always want to go out with a bang, said White when it was all over. He went out with a bang on senior day, and so did Oklahoma. Mark Bradley there. Final score. 30 to 3 in this one is Jason White. Sets a school record with 18 consecutive completions in the big route. So who should play USC in the Orange Bowl for the BCS title? Oklahoma and Auburn, they've got identical records. They've both beaten three ranked teams. Auburn, however, with a slightly better average margin of victory. Both teams have also clinched berths in their respective conference title games, so they've both got to survive those. The College Game Day gang is on the plains to debate the question, Auburn or Oklahoma? Rose is playing at Washington. Bears down three in the second quarter. Aaron Rodgers to the true freshman, Marshawn Lynch. He's going to bobble it, but it sticks. Lynch ruining the Husky senior day with three touchdowns. Dogs kept it close for a while. We're going to go past that point. Cal, 21 third quarter points. Again, Hosen blocks the punt. Justin Forrest recovers for six. Washington thinking Apple Cup. Cal thinking Rose Bowl. 42-12. Ted heads. They're America's team, the 9-0 Utah Utes in the dark in Laramie, Wyoming. Hour and 39-minute power delay. And, well, they haven't had a power outage in Utah all year. Steve Savoy on the reverse. Quarterback Alex Smith passed for 244 yards and three scores. He ran for 105 yards. Alex Smith, bring him to New York for the highest conference history. How early? these teams up before the rooster crow. Compare how your morning began with how these teams got their days underway. Breakfast always goes down so much better before 6 a.m. Not a lot of folks attended this game, but those who did, did it in style. Pancakes, bacon, and you know Bailey's in the coffee. Hey, well, <laughs> bartender. 902 West Coast time. Let's get ready to rumble. Where we want to go to. Pajama party in the stands and even Sparty wore his bathrobe. First quarter, Dale Rogers finds Tyson Thompson. Hey, where's the Boise defense? They're sleeping. That's where. San Jose up seven, three minutes into the game. Boise State answers. But here comes the home team again. It's Adam Trafalis to Rufus Skiller. And the defense? Hey, where you at? Uh, extra Z's. The Broncos thought this game kicked off at 945. 79 yard score, 14 7. San Jose, third quarter. Boise State has the lead. San Jose. The fake field 
go, Bo Pierce. He completes the trick play, 28 apiece. Just over a minute left. Jeff Carr can pull off the huge upset if he can hit the 30-yarder. It's blocked! This game's going to overtime. Remember, Fitz Hills Club was a 33-point underdog. The power of the PJ is overwhelming, though. Overtime, San Jose's Lance Martin finished with 112 yards. Puts the Spartans up 49-42. Lee Marks. Finished with 140 yards. Answers back for Boise State. This game is going to double overtime, tied at 49. Broncos getting their wake-up call, have won 19 straight games, longest active streak in the country. Second overtime, John Helmendaller with his third touchdown of the game. Oh, what a game, 56-49. San Jose needs the answer, and both clubs need a lunch break. Trafalis on fourth down, cornerback Gray Franklin gonna run him out of bounds. It's time for a nap. This game ended shortly after one on the West Coast. Almost a huge up. Putting on a show, Boise State stays on the undefeated stage. 56 to 49 in double overtime. Jared Zabransky, 200 yards passing. This one was done on the ground. And, well, Fitz Hills Club almost pulls off the upset against Dan Hawkins. Boise Michigan controls its Rose Bowl destiny. Wolverines hosting Northwestern. Michigan Seniors final home game. Wolverines won 14 straight at Ann Arbor, but it's a freshman who steals the show. Mike Hart, first quarter, one of a season-high three touchdowns, 151 yards for Hart. Fourth quarter, 28-13, Michigan. Chad Henney, Steve Breston, 10-yard touchdown. Henney, 19-26, 187 yards, two touchdowns. It's 35-13. Now, see, there's 9.49 left in the game right there, okay? All right. Now, now look at there's nine. They're punting at 9.28, so only 20 seconds later, and it's Breston fielding it at the 33. This guy went for 272 all-purpose yards, scores two touchdowns in only 35 seconds. That's unbelievable. 42-20 if Michigan beats Ohio State next weekend. Hey, it's Pasadena. Ohio State, it's been a rough week for Jim Tress with all the allegations about wrongdoing in his program. Fourth quarter, OSU down seven, third and goal, Troy Smith. Second effort here, Smith threw for 192 yards, ran for 62, but he did throw three picks. That tied it at 17, Kyle Orton out with a hip injury, comes in in the fourth quarter, his second drive. Dustin Keller, touchdown as Orton takes the Boilermakers, 80 yards in eight plays. Orton was six for six on the drive, and Purdue wins over Ohio State, 24-17. They snap their four-game losing streak. Saying am entertaining Texas Tech, entertaining ball game, fourth quarter, 15-12 Tech. Reggie McNeil finds freshman Kerry Franks down the sideline. And then he's going to stretch it into the end zone. They missed the PAT though, 18-15 AM. Now it's 25-18 AM. Tech, fourth and goal, 15 seconds left. Sonny Cumbie, Jared Hicks. He Greg makes the grab. We're going to overtime, tied at 25. First play of OT, McNeil. Option right, pitches to Courtney Lewis. Can't tackle him. 149 yards, two touchdowns for the sophomore. AM leads 32-25. Sonny Cumbie threw 50 passes. This is number 50 on the day, and he needs a first down or a touchdown to stay alive. Cody Fowler over the middle. No. Coach Fran's team wins 32-25 in OT. 50th ranked LSU hosting Alabama. Crimson Tide 15-1 and 1 at LSU since 1969. Third quarter, Bama up 10-6. Spencer Pennington picked off by Corey Webster and uh, Mike Shula furious that there's no laundry on the field. He wanted a pass interference call. Tide could have had a 17-6 lead. Early third would have been in pretty good shape. Instead, they get nothing. Same score, Pennington. Sacked by Marcus Spears, Cameron Vaughn scoops this one up, runs it in, and LSU has a 13-10 lead. Defensive battle between two of the top four defenses in the nation. A couple of big swing plays there in the third quarter. Fourth quarter now, Jamarcus Russell, Joseph Adai, and LSU. Nice move. 26-10 winners. Nick Saban 4-0 at LSU against Alabama. In Minnesota, these two, well, they play for a pick. Yeah, the Floyd of Rosedale trophy. There it is. Second quarter, Lawrence Maroney up the sideline. Come back this way now. 79 yards. He ran for a buck 56 and three scores. He's over the 1,200-yard rushing mark for the season. Gophers down 23-10 at halftime, however. Fourth quarter, their other big back. 
two-headed monster. Marion Barber, the third, down to the Hawkeye 14. Barber ran for 167 yards Saturday. He's over the 1,100-yard mark this season. First tandem in NCAA history to rush for 1,000 yards in consecutive seasons. 32 seconds left. Minnesota down two. Reese Lloyd can win it from 51. No good. And you guys get the pig. Iowa takes the Floyd of Rosedale for a fourth straight time. Hawkeyes have won six in a row overall. Oklahoma State and Baylor on the Cowboys' home range. Oak State trying to bounce back after getting bounced by Texas a week ago. It's those Woods brothers early. Dewan, 53-yard pass from Donovan. Scores. Donovan passed for two, ran for another. Oklahoma State gets the first seven. Prentice Elliott in the fourth quarter with Les Miles Club up big, and he goes big. 74 yards. Field cam. Love it. Senior Seymour Shaw, 172 yards in this game. Oklahoma State, big, 49-21. Tyler Palco and the Pittsburgh Panthers trailing Notre Dame 35-31. Fourth quarter in South Bend. Here we go. Fourth and four now. Got to have it. Palco flips to Marcus Furman. And this is going to be a first down. Keeps the drive alive. Look at that little underhand flip for a top lane nominee. The drive is still going. More Same field drive. Field. Yeah, nice work. I'll let you know when they need help. <laughs> Fourth and ten, Palco <laughs> to the end zone. Eventually intercepted, but hold on. We got a penalty. Watch Preston Jackson grab the receiver. This is pass interference, and it will keep the drive alive right there. There's Jackson. Irish called for a season-high 10 penalties and 119 yards. Two plays later, Palco, Eric Gill, 38-35 Pittsburgh. Palco, the first quarterback to throw five touchdown passes against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish in one game ever. No one had ever done that. Neil Everett, your thoughts? Uh, Thank you. Just over a minute to play. <laughs> DJ Fitzpatrick can tie it from 45, doinks it, and it's in. Another look, Fitzpatrick, the Irish kid, gets the touchdown. Jesus bounces it home, ties it at 38. Last chance for Pittsburgh. Palco, where's Gill? Look at him busting tackles inside the 35 here. Palco, 26 of 42, 334, and the five scores. It sets up this. Josh Cummings from 32, and this will win the game. Looks like it's headed right, and then it curves through. Pittsburgh wins. It's the Panthers' first win in South Bend since 19. In Washington State, the desert, Jake Plummer, one of about 50 former Pat Tillman teammates there to honor the former NFL player, Army Ranger, who was killed in combat in Afghanistan in April. First quarter, Arizona State, trick play, Chris McDonald, the lead graph. Sets up a first down, and then Andrew Walter in his final home game. The senior goes to Terry Richardson for 18 yards. Arizona State up 14-0. At halftime of this game, they retired Pat Tillman's jersey number 42. It was an emotional moment for his family and all those in attendance. Fourth quarter, Walter. Five touchdowns to five different receivers. Zach Miller there. Walter, 332 yards passing, 45-28 ASU, and they gave the game ball to Pat Tillman's daddy. Kansas State at Colorado had an unreal finish. We're tied under 20 seconds to Joel. Joel Klatt is going to throw it deep, and Ron Monte is there, and nobody from Bill Snyder's defense is. Colorado wins 38-31. Gary Barnett's club is bowl eligible. Kansas State will miss the postseason for the first time in 12 years. Penn State taking its six-game losing streak into Indiana. Nittany Lions hadn't lost seven in a row since 1931. 2.20 to go. Penn State up 22-16. Matt Lavecchio hits Travis Haney. Anwar Filtz with a touchdown saving tackle, but the Hoosiers have a first and goal at the one. Chris Taylor, not so much. Second and goal now. Taylor again. Uh-uh. Taylor held the 46 yards on 15 carries. Third and goal. Lavecchio. Little option, gonna keep it, tucks it, not there. So here we go, fourth and goal, and guess what? Taylor has stopped again. The Nittany Lions stopped the Hoosiers four times from the one, and Penn State ends its six-game losing streak. They finally get a Big Ten win, 22-18 in Blooming.